we live in neo-feudalism. This is not capitalism. Mm. This is where you have a underclass, right? A lumpen proletariat almost is taken care of by the state. You have the very wealthy and you have this kind of neo-feudalist working class and middle class in the middle that pays for everything. And the guys at the top, we've socialized the risk, that trillion dollars of infusion, right? Remember, the balance sheet of the Federal Reserve on the morning of September 18th, 2008, when they're in the Oval Office talking, is $880 billion. The balance sheet of the Federal Reserve on uh, January 17th or January 20th of 2017, when Donald Trump raises his hand, is $4.5 trillion. The most progressive president in the history of our country, President Obama, saved the wealthy. And here's how they did it. They just turned on the taps of liquidity. We call it, the technical term is quantitative easing. Right. The not technical term is called bailing out the people who are guilty. Okay. <laughs> so essentially, if you owned anything, you had the greatest ten-year run in history. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Let's move to the TARP vote, and and whether you think so. Now all of that is happening. It's you have turning. to do TARP. The first one you have yeah, to do. Yeah, yeah. You know why your fiduciary when when a guy like Bernanke walks in and says, "I need a trillion dollars." Right? You don't have time to debate. History's going to look at you. And you he says, the American financial system's going to collapse in 72 hours, and the world financial system two days after that, you have global anarchy. There's not a person on earth. I don't hear these libertarians and all these, you know, free market, oh, let capitalism take place. Yeah. No. When they come in and ask for the first trillion in an emergency, I believe you have to say, okay, we got to do it. I don't know what went on here, but if you're telling me this is going to save me and at least get down the road, I'll do it. But remember, that's the first trillion. We kept on for another three and a half trillion dollars. Yeah. Three and a half trillion dollars. This is just bailing out the people that caused the problems. Got to think about it for a second. Uh, you know, Goldman Sachs didn't lose any equity. Uh, none of the partners really missed any bonus payments. None of GE still in business. AIG, it all still exists. All the donors. Okay, the reverse side of this, remember, there is a corollary to this. It's quite powerful. And we know from the notes of the Federal Reserve, a guy named Richard Fisher, the governor, the president of the Federal Reserve of Dallas, argued this in the room constantly. He said, by doing this quantitative easing, which you're just flooding the zone with liquidity, we will save the institutions. And we will save anybody that's a big real estate holder or a hedge fund or bank. But he said, there's a huge reverse here. Number one, savings accounts, you're going to go to zero interest rates. Savings accounts are going to go to zero. So 5,000 years of the Western tradition, back to the Marty Bannons, which is be a good householder. Get a wife, get a mortgage, get some kids, and you save your money. Well, now if you save money, you're a sucker because it's broken the trust. That's the trust is broken. If you save money, you're a jerk because you're not going to get any interest pay. In fact, the bank's going to charge you. So there's been no, you can't, you can't put money away to save into the system. Number two, the pension funds. The pension funds are going to be destroyed. Today, we have a $9.5 trillion gap between the obligations of the pension funds and, and, and what we've earned off the pension funds. Why? Because it went to zero interest rates and the bonds they can buy have no juice in them. Right? The other thing is the public schools and all this, even communities that are not leveraged can't issue bonds because there's no juice in the bonds because of negative interest rates, 1.5%. We've essentially put the burden on the bailout on the working class and middle class. That's why nobody owns anything. Right. But the, the millennials today are nothing but the 19th century Russian serfs. They're better fed. They're better clothed. They're in better shape. They have more information than anybody in the world at any point in time. But they don't own anything. They're not going to own anything, okay? And, they, and, and they're 20 percent. You if you mark in time against their parents, they're 20 percent behind in their income. And there's no pension plan in the future. They're, they're all gig economy. We've literally destroyed the middle class in this country. Okay. And both political parties. By the way, this is not about Republicans and Democrats. Right. This but is this is this is the way the system works, and this is the way the system comes together to protect itself and to, and to, and to move itself forward. Okay. okay. And and so because nobody understands even the rudimentaries of finance, right? And they keep the public kind of economically illiterate. 